1,756 mods. I've been playing Skyrim for the past year using the Elysium Remastered mod list. Links to it in the righty bits. This is to be the 50th episode of said Let's Play. But it's not going to be like my normal content. No, no, no. I wanted to use this milestone to take a look back on the series as a whole. That's right. It's everybody's favorite anime episode. The recap episode. <laughs> if you haven't seen anything up to this point, that's perfect. This episode was literally made for you, new viewer. As for those of you who have been with me since the beginning, how about a trip down memory lane? You've been meaning to get out of the house for a while. Look, Memory Lane even has little patches of grass you can touch. Isn't that nice? Yeah. For real though, I just wanted to do something a little more edited. It's probably going to turn out cringe, but who knows. Speaking of cringe, Episode 1! I had a bit of fun with character creation and made one of my first relatively successful TikToks out of it. I wrote an entire backstory for our boy Tardy Penis, which is just cringe. But it's just some harmless light RP in order to help me make decisions in game. Now into the actual game. We wake up from a bonk on our head and grab everything that's not nailed down. We are then tasked with Baby's First Dungeon, where I pretty immediately find my new favorite weapon, the spear. I kick some ghost ass and then it's time to go to our new home in solitude. Okay, my duty here is done. Episode 2 has us taking a tour of our new museum that we own and just figuring out a lot of what it has to offer. Episode 3 is when we finally make it out into the world. We join the college, find a wrecked ship, and go to our first actual dungeon. I get overwhelmed and start to pray to whatever god will take me. Then, my prayers answered. Woolly angels descend and smite my enemies. Get fucked, dude. My gods. My beautiful beings. Episode 4 sees us exploring the Silent Moon's camp, where I die a lot. I find what I was looking for, which turned out to be a book that tells me I didn't find what I was looking for. It tells me to go to the top of the mountain, so I do. And while I do, I keep dying on my horse for no reason. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Why? I get to the top of the mountain and move on with my life. Next stop was Windhelm, where I'm told to leave because of good old high fantasy racism. Hold it there, Argonian. Oh. You're not allowed inside the city. It's the law here. You need to leave. Okay. Episode 5, I decide to start the college quest line. Nothing new here really, except for this funny dog. I find the big orb at the end of the episode, and we learn our first dragon slur. Ice form. Episode 6 was mostly spent in menus, but I get better at cutting the fat as the series goes on. I also completely broke my game riding the horse. What is happening? What? What? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Am I going to die from this? Let me Can I get off the horse? Oh, that just turns on uh Okay. This seems to be a problem. Towards the end of the episode, I start the main quest, which has us starting the only dungeon I ever remember playing in Skyrim originally. Bleak Falls Barrow. Episode 7, we dive deeper into the BFB. Saving this dickhead just for him to go off and be a dickhead, we also find an absolute ass ton of ruined books, which have become super useful since we can give them to the Latoria to turn into spells and such. Then we do the claw puzzle, find another word, and then have our first real boss fight. 
I offer him a little cheese and he dies. First thing I do in episode 8 is wash my penis. The animation takes quite a lot longer than I thought it would. Then we go back and turn in the ruined books for the first time and get some hot garbage. We continue our way to Helgen where we are greeted by a dragon whose animation started late and scared the hell out of me. This is the starting town. What the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> Scared of the shit of me. Oh fuck. We fail our mission, so I decide to take a detour to the nearest quest marker for a key that only works half the fucking time and a ton of keys that work none of the time. In episode 9, we start the vanilla main quest by going into a cave and find a text-to-speech voice man dying, only to have said man get up, fight, and kill the spider that hurt him, and then go back to whining. Aw, poor boy. On our raid to Riverwood, we get ambushed by bandits, and one of them just casually turns into a werewolf, almost killing me. We make it to Riverwood and sit down for dinner, but they won't let me eat anything? Rude. In fact, everything in this house is marked as steel, except for their loose change? 60% of episode 10 is spent in the museum. Just getting my fucking life together, man. We also visit Whiterun for the first time in this episode. We talk to the Jarl to progress the main quest, and they ask me to slay a dragon. Episode 11 starts with me shilling out my favorite Walmart water, then doing the one thing I regret most during this playthrough. I kill a dragon. Why do I regret this? Well, this quest triggers the ability for dragons to start spawning everywhere to kill you. Which normally wouldn't be a problem, but there's a mod on this list that's called Deadly Dragons. A mod that makes sure dragons are as powerful and dangerous as they should be. If Dark Souls hadn't taught me to be stubborn, I would have reloaded and done something else, but I cheesed the shit out of this dragon and made my life hell. I go back to the Jarl and tell him I'm a special little boy, then get my first companion of the playthrough, Lydia. Don't get attached. In episode 12, we start in the mountains where I find out I don't have access to the mod that lets me go back to Cyrodiil. And in order to do so, I just need to complete the college quest line. So that's on the top of my list of things to do. And I do just that. Go back to the college, do a dungeon crawl, learn a new word. End of episode. Episode 13 just sees me having the smoothest brain because I start doing a quest that I thought was for the college, but in fact wasn't. <laughs> I do the dungeon anyway and fight this little teleporting bastard. I continue with this dumb quest and I get absolutely bodied. I'm dead. I'm dead. He just one shot me. After getting sniped, I say, Okay, that's it. Where you guys? I'm going home. Episode 14 opens with us going back to college to speak with a man about some books. Then I am immediately attacked by a dragon. After the dragon has been dealt with, I head off to get a quill. I only do this quest because it's between me and where I need to go. Little did I know, in order to get this quill, I would have to face off with bandits, dwarven constructs, and Falmer. All with a BS robot boss at the end. All just to get this crappy, shitty thing that I will never use. In episode 15, I make my way up a mountain just to get my ass absolutely fucked by a dragon. You know what else? You're... you're a girl dragon! Oh, sh To the point where I give up on catching these hands and make my way down the mountain. I found where I needed to be for the stolen books. I do the dungeon perfectly, not dying a single time, I promise, but then I get to the boss. And this bitch kicks my ass all over the place until I put my foot down and say, no, we're going to go do something else. But we'll be back shortly. Between the episodes, my computer actually shits itself to death. So I had to replace some stuff, which means I had to re-download the entire mod pack, which updated with a ton of new mods. I think I'm on version 
five now, probably. Luckily, I was able to recover my save and continue with this adventure. In episode 16, a viewer tells me about something that can help me with fall damage, so I have to travel to Falkreath. And of course, as soon as I do, I get there and the dragon is no happy. With the dragon dead, it doesn't take me long to find what I'm looking for. A man falls out of the sky, apparently a reference to Morrowind. The man had a paraglider, and I'm told to scale the mountain if I wanted one. Most of the episode is getting killed by bandits while climbing up the mountain, but when I reach the top, what a beautiful view. I fly around for a bit and find myself in an unloaded falk wreath, so I fast travel to reload it and get into another dragon fight. In episode 17, we start by talking to some of the museum peeps. Uh, then we thwart the worst assassination attempt I have ever seen. Look, that Is that an like invisible man? And now that the Dominion has risen once more, it seeks to bring elsewhere under its thumb. Is he gonna get assassinated right now? There are those of us who would not have this. So Rakis happens upon this relic a number of years ago, brings it into his safe. Think, but word spread swiftly on the worn winds of elsewhere, and now the Thalmor seek to obtain it. Every piece of power they get their hands on brings that all you've got? closer to dominating all of Tamriel. So Rakis gives to you the staff of so that you may safe keep it and keep it from the clutches of the Thalmor. Phew, that was close. You saved Rekis from that sneaky Thalmor. <laughs> Rekis owes you his life. <laughs> he wishes he had something of value to give you for saving him. And we get an airship that I won't use till a little later. After that, we go around town completing some simple quests and fast travel over to Windhelm. It's here that I get asked if I'm racist, to which I respond with the correct answer. I literally don't even want to talk to you. <laughs> Am I racist? Hmm. <laughs> You've no. come to the wrong city then. Then outside Windhelm, I talk to a random guy on a boat who whisks me away to far, far away into the DLC. A DLC that I had no idea even existed, so I thought it was just a huge ass mod. I explore the town, wipe out a bandit camp nearby, and finish it all off with a jump scare. Oh shit! What the fuck was that? Episode 18 is mostly exploring and fighting. I do get mind controlled by a rock, so that was fun. After that we do some more dungeon diving where I find my new best friend, Juanathan. Episode 19! At the end of the last episode, we were tasked with killing a long-since-dead general. He's already dead, so it should be easy. As Wanathan's first true battle, I can say he passes with flying colors. And now, I have a new best friend for life. We kill the general and turn the quest in. Without any more direction, I decide to take a stroll down the beach where I find suicide spiders, a madman, and this fucking thing. What the hell just happened? Oh shit! What the fuck is that? Oh my god! Oh my fucking Christ, bro! Eventually, I find myself in the small mushroom treehouse town where this dick of a wizard lives. I agree to help him with his research where he just experiments on me and I have to wait for side effects, whatever that means. You know what time it is. Dog time. It's dog time, everybody. Everybody knows it's dog time. I buy a dog in episode 20. I name him Cat Vegetable, which I know sounds weird, but it makes sense because he's the exact opposite of dog meat from Fallout. Where dog meat is useful, Cat Vegetable actively gets in your way. Where dog meat will help you in a fight, Cat Vegetable will literally gang up on you. Where dog meat is cute and adorable, Cat vegetable is, well... He's also pretty cute and adorable, I'm not gonna lie. But enough about my new dog. I run into these people at the beach that said their home had been taken by goblin dudes, and I go and help them get it back. On the way to my next objective, I take a little swim and have my health permanently lowered because of it. Turns out those side effects are triggered by water. I go back to the deranged doctor to get a cure. 
When I try to head home to put stuff away, I'm stopped by a priest at the door, and he says there's a ghost in the house. Before I can go any further, I am rudely interrupted by another dragon. We head into the museum and see some pretty wacky weird shit. I find a note that I think has something to do with it, but I'm told to take a nap instead. When I awake, shit gets taken up a notch. Mannequins are up walking around. They flipped my dining room table, but not like when you flip it on Monopoly night, like this. I have to do some investigating to find the source of the ghost, and I find a painting of the guy. The priest says to take another map and everything will go back to normal, but I awake to just fire and skeletons and scary whispers. Then going down the hallway, I see Alma from the Fear franchise. Everything goes black and I wake up for real this time and everything is fine. I do some more investigating and find a note talking about a statue the guy commissioned for his wife. Thinking it might be the key, we head to the sculptor's family farm and find out that the family kept the statue all this time. We pay for the statue and have it delivered to the museum. It does indeed solve our little ghost problem. And now we have this pretty statue. I loved this quest. It was wholly unnecessary because the mod itself was just so good with just the idea of the museum. But this quest just makes it a thousand times better. I didn't mention it, but I've been periodically giving this man a series of small loans so that he would continue excavating this ruin for me. He's bleeding me dry. This episode is when I finally get to step inside. Because you see, these dead guys got slaughtered by even deader guys, and I needed to go and clear them out in order to continue. I get unlucky because this button was supposed to activate when I moved the skull, but a pickaxe was perfectly a pixel too close and was keeping the button weighed down. With the way forward open, I can continue to get extorted by this fucking asshole and move on with the quest. Even after giving up so much money, I noticed that my pockets were still pretty plump. Thus, I decided to do a little shopping. I honestly spend way too much time in menus going over equipment, and while I wait for my order, these children keep fucking with this dead guy on the street. Did that little girl just... What is this game? What the fuck are these children doing? Why are you stealing from this dead body? I say as I steal from the dead body, leave me alone. After the upgrade, I went and got it enchanted. God, I'm terrible with money. Luckily, I had enough sitting around in the museum to cover the cost. And thus, the penis poker was born. Then I enchanted some armor as well, but I'm totally out of money now. So I go back to doing what I was doing before I got sick, helping this woman get a blessing from her ancestor or whatever. It doesn't go well, but she tells me to just lie to her people about it, which I guess I'm cool with, because I'm probably never going to see them again. Episode 23, we go back to the excavation site where I have to kill more dead people. During the dungeon, and with a heavy heart, I dismiss Cat Vegetable. He kept getting in the way and sometimes would even get me killed. Oh, there you are. Okay. Cat Vegetable! No! Get vegetable! Get out of the way! Oh, I can't dodge. But don't worry, it won't be the last time we see him, though. After clearing out the site again, this motherfucker has the nerve to ask me for more money. I actually can't afford it this time, so it's time to just go sell a kidney or something. I go back to the museum and get ambushed by yet another dragon. Then I decide to do whatever quest is closest, which turned out to be this bounty hunting mission in the broken ore grotto. I kill everyone, take her head, turn it in, giving me enough money to get robbed once more. At this point, I'm getting pretty desperate for money. So I do the quest that looks easiest for some fast cash. I deliver these shoes and get jack shit for it, wasting my time. While I was doing that, enough time had passed that the excavation site was ready again. Same shit, different day as I get more and more tired of this fucking place. After I'm done, the prick asks me for another 5k, and I'm starting to cry a little. I take everything that's not nailed down in order to sell it. I'm in too deep now, and I regret everything. I go adventuring to find more shit I can sell, and when I come back to the site, it was under attack. 
With my smooth brain, I managed to kill the monster along with some of the miners, which will probably cost me another 3k. Dickhead here also got caught in the blast, but can't die, so when he gets up, he just attacks me. I managed to fuck off far away enough that I can fast travel and wait out his temper tantrum. Everything is back to normal when I get back, so I stop the episode there. In episode 25, I'm still needing cash, so I go off to explore the coastline. I fight a few walruses. Walrus eye? No, that sounds stupid. What the hell's wrong with me? I also explore a goblin camp that has a ton of goodies that these little dudes just hoarding. I also get this cool ice horse for the museum. Outside, I fight some dudes, and one of them has a cloak that I immediately go and enchant. It's surprisingly cheap for what it gives me, because now I have infinite low-level spells that cost no mana. That means infinite, relatively fast healing, which saves my life more times than I can count up to. So get ready to see that a lot. I enchant the rest of my armor, making an absolutely huge mistake. By imbuing my helmet with dark vision, I thought it would only be active in the dark, and instead, everything now looks like this. Oh no. Did I just fucking ruin my helmet by putting this dark vision bullshit on it? Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Aww, damn it. Fuck. And with no way of removing enchantments, I essentially just ruined my best helmet. Once again, returning to the museum to get pounced on by yet another dragon. I grab some more money and purchase a new helmet, but I can't get it enchanted just yet. Heading back to the site again once enough time passes, I show up and everyone is dead again. Back into this absolute mess I go. This time it seems that it has been fully opened up. I learn yet another dragon slur. Then I proceed to kick anything and everything's ass. I get to the final chamber, but guess what? Dickhead is betraying me and summoning an even bigger dickhead. Who could have guessed? A boss battle ensues, and unfortunately, I think they expect me to be way higher level because this fucker is level 70. I give up on trying to have a fair fight and cheese the shit out of him. Dickhead number one says he's sorry, it wasn't my fault. He asked me to forgive him and every cell in my body and every coin in my pocket wants this man dead. <laughs> I let him go because I'm a good person. I do all my looting and continue into the next room where I'm greeted by Cthulhu. Sitting in front of him is the black book. I fearlessly took the book and started to read. Like any good book should, it sucked me in and transported me to another world. Honestly, this area looks so fucking sick. And it's all ruined when this guy starts talking, and I swear it sounds like he's doing a terrible Zoidberg impression. Oh, what the fuck did I do? So, another seeker after knowledge enters my realm. I... I'm Hermaeus Mora, Prince of Fate and Lord of Secrets. I am Tarty Penis. Apocrypha. I fight some cool Lovecraftian monsters, which is a nice change of pace, and I get to the end where the book waits for me. It gives me a choice of three powers, and I take the one that gives me infinite mana for 30 seconds. It'll definitely come in handy later. However, it seems like that's about all I can do here. So I head back to the museum to check up on the airship gifted to me all those episodes ago. Now that I'm quite a bit more leveled up, I decide to go back to school and kill that bitch that won't give me those books. Turns out the boss fight's a lot easier if you're not getting one shot. I pick up the books and head back to the college where they brought back the orb for study. I don't know why, but I somehow got in trouble and sent to the principal's office. When I get there, this guy used to talk to me privately. He tells me or bad and gives me my next objective. He then fucks off and so do I. But as soon as I leave the building, who would have guessed but another dragon ambush? Now we have to make our way to the school's basement. 
in the basement, I run into this fucking door that just baffles me for like 20 minutes. Turns out I just had to walk up closer to the door. I talk to the giant nightlight and go back to tell the teacher. They tell me to go to another stinky ruin, but time was up. I ended the episode with my horse coming to say hi. Hello? Would you like to go to college? Episode 28 starts off with some wacky, funny, fun times with me trying to turn my horse around on the bridge. Fuck. In the arms of okay, I'm gonna fast travel. After that, I head out towards the ruins when I stumble upon some very Silent Hill looking weather. But instead of getting jumped by a monster, I get jumped by a man. After looting the dead man, I go back to the museum for some inventory management, during which I set up the spell Akato's Recital. This is a neat spell that my viewer told me about that basically stores three buffs that will pop on at the beginning of combat automatically. For now, I put in Stone Flesh and Troll's Blood, giving me high damage resistance and massive health regeneration. I make my way into the stinky, smelly, shitty dungeon and go to clear it out of all danger. First fighting Dwarven Constructs and the Falmer, then I die, resetting me about an hour of progress. Moving along, I run into an actual sane human being, and he gives me a puzzle to solve. A puzzle that I admit takes me way longer than it should have. I finish the puzzle, and I'm finally free from my torment. Then I head back to college for the next episode. I get back to the college to find out that Thalmor guy betrayed us. Oh no. We find him shooting lightning at the orb for reasons I couldn't care less about, but then he does a big boom and kills the principal. I play with his corpse for a bit and then head out to town to defend it. After cleaning up the town, I'm told I need to go to another ruin. Yay, I love Skyrim's unique environments. I fast travel to the nearest location and my lord and saviors save my skin once again. Making my way to my actual destination, inside I find a bunch of ghosts of Christmas past talking about all the goodies there are to find in this ruin. Fighting my way through the dungeon, I run into a bone dragon. He turned out to be super easy, so I don't know if I should count him, but I will just to make myself look cooler. I spent a majority of the episode fighting and listening to ghosts about how much they suck and how they all keep dying one by one. I keep fighting and eventually find another dragon word, but this one is super profane, so I'm just gonna have to blur that out in order to stay within TOS of YouTube. I dive deeper and run into the boss of the area. I pump him full of arrows and he drops the staff that I need and a mask that I'll use later. On my way out, I run into another Thalmor who, guess what, betrays me. I nuke him into the ground before he even gets a spell off and I continue with my day. On my way back to the college, I run into someone recruiting for the Dawn Guard, but I won't be going there anytime soon. On the steps of the college, everyone from the school has been evacuated. I use the staff to break in and fight off some minions. I don the mask that I took from that boss earlier, which drastically boosts my imp mana recovery. But I've been playing a little too long, and I'll be leaving the episode off with a bit of a cliffhanger. But it won't be much of a cliffhanger for you, because episode 30 sees us go in and kill the man. I start with the race outside and head inside to find out that I need to do some troubleshooting. You see, this teacher guy is supposed to go up to the other guy and yell something at him, but he never does. I spent about two hours trying everything under the sun to get this quest to trigger. People online were saying things about how this happens if the gate outside was open or some shit, but that wasn't the problem. Some people said just to kill the Thalmor guy with console commands, but that didn't work for me either. Turns out what I had to do was select the teacher using the console commands, then disable him and enable him. Work like a charm, as always, I'm pissed at how easy the solution was. Then the big bad boss fight ensues. To celebrate my victory, the Illuminati personally show up to congratulate me, and then they take my orb away. Anyway, now I'm the Archmage, and it's time for me to loot the last Archmage's room. I only do the first room for now, but we'll come back later for the rest. Then, as always, I go back to the museum to put everything up. And now that I'm Archmage, I've met one of the criteria for visiting Cyrodiil. I fast travel to the gate where the guard lets me through with no objection this time. Welcome, everyone, to Beyond Skyrim Bruma, a fantastic mod 
where we'll be spending a good amount of time. I head down the mountain to see an ogre fighting with a bear. A fight that I sure as shit would have lost money on if I was a betting man because the bear took him down with ease, only to be obliterated by my dumbass. Further down, I find the Snowstone Rest, where I head in and start talking to the owner and patrons. I pick up a few quests and Wanathan is having the time of his life. Outside, I explore more of the surrounding area while still heading in the direction of Bruma. I discover a couple caves, have a run in with some cutters, and fight a werebear, which I didn't know that was a thing. That's super cool. Eventually, I made my way to Bruma. I spend the rest of the episode exploring the city, listening to people talk on the street, and searching for the blacksmith to deliver a letter from his brother that we met at the rest. I find the building, but I don't find him inside it, so I decide to leave the episode off there for the day. I start the episode back at the college, because I was told by a viewer that the room can be changed into five different states, and there was a lot more to loot. And loot I do, but that's boring for the most part, so I cut it out. Back in Bruma, I manage to find the blacksmith and deliver the letter. Then I speak to Gort, a man who's missing his bucko killin, and ask me to find it for him. Never in my life have I agreed to a quest faster with no questions asked. I love this man. Simple as that. The quest marker is all the way across the map, giving me the perfect excuse to explore the area. I paraglide around, getting some absolutely beautiful views. I discover the quaint little town of Greenwood, an alien ruin, and a cave on my way. When I found the cave I was actually looking for, it was just filled with some wolves and bears that wouldn't shut the fuck up. No? Okay. You keep screaming and yelling. I'm gonna look around for a bit. Looks like it used to be somebody's home. Will you shut the hell up? Then, the cave within a cave. Things get chilly in this one. A bunch of ice wraiths, atronats, and even a named one. But he died like a bitch like the rest of them. So I don't really remember his name. Then, suddenly a fire atronath in an ice cave? Crazy! I pick up the Book of Killin', and it seems just as dumb as I was hoping. On my way out, I get absolutely jump-scared by this fucking deer. Oh shit! Fuck. I also find this door that doesn't work and I have no idea what to do with. I'll probably Google it later if I remember. I get back to Bruna and find Gort, drunk and having a gay ol' fun time. I give him his book, and he suddenly sounds less drunk. <laughs> Next episode, I test the limits of this mod. The plan? Head south as far as I possibly can. That's it, that's, that's the plan. Off we go! getting a beautiful shot of the city. It won't look like that for long. About halfway there, the ambient sounds just turn off. Okay, I saw footsteps, the ambience is just gone. That's cool. Um... I managed to cross the river, which is where I expected to run into an invisible wall, but no wall came. Even when the world started to break, even at the end of it all, nothing came. I think I'll go home now. Except I didn't go home. I went to the alien ruin we had discovered earlier, and man, I gotta say, it is so nostalgic seeing this tile set again. I played the absolute shit out of Oblivion, and I, I just think these ruins looked a lot better than Skyrim's boring-ass caves. But that's neither here nor there. This ruin is littered with cultists and loot, but nothing really stands out. So when I'm done looting, I head over to the other cave that we discovered at the same time. The cave had nothing really of note, except for this bridge. This bridge that made me look like a fucking idiot for 20 minutes. I was too busy looting to see the chain on the wall, and was looking all around for a way to lower the bridge. After I manage to do so, I find a deeper part of the cave that's filled with bandits. I find a book that asks me to change my religion, and it is concerning. Then I find a sentient rock. It asked me to go back to Skyrim and take it to a mountaintop. I needed to go back to the museum anyway, so I figured I'd do that while I was out there. We start the episode strong with yet another dragon fight, followed by this guy committing just straight up murder. I head across the river, but Wanathan seems to have some trouble following. It's okay though, I don't want him to see my own psychotic episode. I make it to Meridian's statue, 
and she just keeps bitching about one thing or another. Now, I probably shouldn't have said that because she shoots my ass into the stratosphere. Now she's demanding me to get an artifact back for her and kill some dude. Once inside the temple, I actually talk about how huge the file size is for this mod pack. I kill some dudes and do a light puzzle that doesn't confuse me for too, too long. After a good while, I finally find the guy and he's surrounded by skelly boys. The ads don't take long to deal with, but I kept missing my shots due to some weird hitbox bullshit. Finally managed to kill him and wouldn't you know it, he had a second phase. I'm out of mana, so I panic and hit the wrong button. <laughs> then hit the right button and stun lock him to death. The relic turns out to be a sword, and when I take it, I'm teleported back into the sky where she gives it to me. It's a cool looking sword, but I don't plan on using it. I take a trip back to the museum and deal with yet another dragon fight. When I walk into the museum, I'm greeted with the sight of blood and not my stuff. I talk to the head of security and he tells me that some of his mates from back in the day heard he was working up here and came just to fuck shit up. Don't you just hate it when your friends come to your workplace just to fuck around? Now, time for some swift justice. Well, okay, maybe not swift, because this episode's almost an hour long, but still justice. I fast travel to the nearest location and have some fights along the way. Once I get to the cave, I have quite a bit of trouble with the bandits there. But after dying several times, I finally end up on top. Deeper into the cave, I find a note saying that my princess was in another castle, and my buddy tells me the big boss is in town to handle this job himself. So we follow our lead and cut off the caravan before they can get to the border. Again, I die a couple times, but after I succeed, I get a majority of my stuff back. But I'm told that the big boss man has a real good good, so we're off to confront him. Turns out I had already discovered his hidey hole, so it was easy to fast travel to. Once inside, I didn't have much trouble with the bandits here. Must have learned my lessons from the last few fights. We get to the boss arena, and my buddy guy friend pal here tries to talk him down. Now for the big plot twist. The big boss was his brother. Brother! Unfortunately, bro fails his charisma check and we fight to the death. Obviously, I prevail and I gather the last of my stuff. I head back to the museum and try to talk to my partner, but he won't stop stuffing his fat fucking face to talk to me. But he drops everything to talk to the courier. Pissing me off. Eventually, I do get to talk to him and he says that it'll take a bit of time to fully restore the museum. So I put everything away and I take a nap in my bed in order to pass the time. I wake up, take a bath, and talk to the NPCs. Dude bro is hella sorry for everything, but I forgive him in full. Man, another solid quest for this mod. Didn't need it, but love that they have it. While walking around, I'm given a sick-ass katana that actually slaps. Episode 35 was the first time I started using AI-generated art for my thumbnails, and honestly, it was such a spike in viewership that I still do it even now. Plus, I think it looks cool as hell. I am no artist, nor do I have the money to hire one, so I just find an image that I like and spruce it up in Photoshop. Anyway, we're back in Bruma, and it's time to go explore some more. I find a cave full of bandits. Nothing of real note inside, just some now dead guys and a couple of safes. So I exit the cave and start to paraglide down the mountain, just enjoying the view. But little did I know, I landed right next to a bunch of necromancers performing a ritual. It scared the hell out of me, but I managed to take them all out on the first try. I continue exploring and find more bandits, but in a camp this time. I take them all out, not on my first try. Then I decide to do looting in between episodes so I can go back and put it all away because it's boring. In the chest, I found an amulet that triggered a quest to return it to its owner. Problem was, the owner was literally on the other side of the map. I wanted to forego fast traveling in order to discover more points of interest, and boy am I glad I did. What the fuck was that? I did see that. Okay. After that, I couldn't really find any other landmarks, so I ended up fast traveling to the furthest point I could. I travel east and... Is that a duck? What the hell is that? Is that rabbit just running on water? Hello, duck. This mod is literally being coded as I'm playing it. I discover a few places and get into a couple of fights. 
My ADHD kicks in and I stop to admire the graphics. For some reason, I have to go out of bounds to get to the road that leads back in bounds to the camp in the mountains. Turns out it's a group of Talos worshippers hiding from the Thalmor. I finish turning in the quest and talk to everyone. Then I explore a little more, thinking I had to be pretty close to the map border. I find a couple of places and it, I turned out to be right. I hit the map edge. I return to Bruma the end of the episode, but instead it is chaos. People are running and screaming, my battle buffs activate. I have no idea what's going on. Turns out a werewolf changed in the middle of town and came out swinging. I accidentally kill a guard here, but I don't get in trouble for it. With the werewolf dead and the people unfazed, I end the episode there. Thirty-seven is an episode I spent quite a lot of time talking to NPCs. I start with the Thalmor, but nothing comes of it. Then I head inside to the castle and get stopped by the guard captain. He informs me that the Counts had his priceless heirloom stolen, so a quest is triggered to return them. The quest doesn't give me a map marker, so I just continue to talk to everyone. I run out of people to talk to in the castle, so I head to the local criminal-filled bar. I talk to an orc who has nothing to do with my current quest, but gives me a quest of his own to help find his missing wife. We'll be doing that later though. The bartender on the other hand seemed like a hard cookie to crack. He won't tell me anything about his customers, so I get a prompt to find a way to pressure him into doing so. I head out and over to the guard captain again. He gave me a piece of paper and sends me on my way to deliver it. The bartender, after reading the letter, says nonchalantly that there were some bandits in a cave and marks it on my map. I kill all the bandits, but my treasure appears to be in another castle again because I find a note saying so. I head back to town and the thief who stole the artifact for the bandits is hiding in some random dude's house. Me and the boss man go in and the dude is already beat to hell. Turns out they betrayed him. The captain says the gang should split up and tasks me with going into the trapdoor and retrieving the artifact. While down in the trapdoor, I fight a dude and find the artifact in a pouch sitting on a table. On my way out, I do a bit of a bad boy thing and I steal everything of work. Back at the castle, I watch the thief get turned in and both the count and the guard captain give me their thanks with a pretty hefty amount of gold. In the start of episode 38, I finally figure out how the local map works. Never even thought of using it in a town to see the names of the buildings around. Now I'm going to use it to look around, and the first stop is the Fighters Guild. Slowly I became more and more disappointed as I explored. I exhausted all the dialogue trees, explored every room, and I couldn't even join the damn guild. So I gave up, and as soon as I walk outside, I run into the leader of the guild. We talk, and I think I'm finally getting somewhere when she says they're not looking for new members. But I could put up these posters around town for a small bit of coin. This whole ordeal was unfruitful and sad, so I go somewhere else to explore. As I do, I run into this guy who just absolutely clips his mic screaming. Ah! What the fuck was that? There was a wolf attack outside, but nothing important. I end up putting up all the posters anyway just to get the quest off my journal. And yeah, turns out that was the whole quest line. Which sucks, but I mean, this mod is already so incredible. I'm just looking at gift course in the mouth. Also, sidebar, I looked up the origin of that phrase because of this, and apparently it stems from the fact that you can determine how old a horse is by looking at its teeth, and that it was considered rude to do so in front of the person that gifted you the horse, because it was if you were immediately trying to determine the value of the gift. Just thought it was interesting. Anyway, back to the video. The next building I enter because I like its symbols, but little did I know what would happen next. I don't know. What is this building? I like its symbols. Who dares disturb my rest? Excuse the fuck out of me. What is happening? Am I dead? Oh, shit, I'm not dead. Holy fucking Christ. That clip I edited up for TikTok, and it is by far 
my highest viewed video. It almost has a million views, so please go watch it again there so that I can pass that milestone. A crazy fight ensues, and one of the dude turns out to be important, so I can't kill him. After a while, everything goes quiet, so I think it's over. Then, Wanathan gets back up and immediately starts fighting again. I even try to talk to one of the guys, but Wanathan was just not having it today and attacked him again. Wanathan, drop it. Leave it alone. Okay. What do you think about the College of Whispers? I. What was that? Oh my god, Wanathan, you fucking stupid son of a bitch. Even though I super didn't want to have to do it, I had to protect my boy from himself. I put him back in his Pokeball. I talked to the other people without interruption this time, and nothing really came of it. Plus, I was so shook from the whole experience, I just wanted out of that damn place. I leave the building and am caught by a guard saying I have a bounty of two grand. I pay the 2k gold and unfortunately I have all my stolen goods taken from me. A lot of this shit I forgot I had on me, so it's not a huge loss. I continue around town and find this little butcher shop. Downstairs in the butcher shop is this old retired hunter. I talk to him and he regales me about a tale of hunting a massive grizzly bear. Found me on the slopes of Dive Rock, galloping from a copse of trees faster than an avalanche. Its roar louder than thunder. I didn't have time to put an arrow into his heart. I dropped my bow, pulled out my axe, and danced with the beast on that mountain. Fortunately, such a creature is not well suited for hunting on the steep crags of the Geralds. After a little tussle, I sent the beast tumbling off the cliff to its death. Took me nearly a week to find, clean, and haul the carcass back to Bruma. Now it sits above the fire. A proper trophy. <laughs> I'm guessing... I'm guessing in your house, right? <laughs> After that fun time, I find my way back to the shady bar in town to pick up another quest. He says there's some uppity bitch trying to shut the bar down, but that's for another episode. I leave and go to the other bar in town, a more high-class establishment. Well, I say that, then I see this fucker. What's going on here? Who made that noise? Anyway, I talk to the guy giving the bar trouble and can't seem to get him to back off. We'll figure it out later, though. I go back to the castle and talk to some people that apparently was progressing a different quest. They also tell me that the captain is looking for me. The captain wants me to talk to some Talos worshippers and get them to calm down. But again, that'll be for another episode. Episode 39, one of the few episodes I actually had a plan for. First thing to do is talk to this gaggle of people just hanging right outside the door of the bar. One of them tells me to steal this guy's journal, and she'll tell me where it is if I put a love note in there for him. I consider myself a bit of a matchmaker, so I agree. The quest is called Ugly Love, after all. I head to the castle and talk to probably the most helpful NPC I've ever seen. He actually helps with my investigation by going and looking at the records. He tells me what I want to know, but he also says he remembers some other guy doing the same thing, but it was off the record, making that guy more of a suspect. I search his quarters, grab the journal, and leave the note. I can't seem to talk about it to him, though. So I say fuck it and go tell the orc that this guy did it. He took your wife. I expected him to fly off the handle and kill him, but I vastly underestimated him because he calmly asked me to find more evidence at his house in order to fully connect them to the crime. And boy, do I feel dumb. Wait, was I just being fantasy racist? Probably. Anyway, I break into his house and kill his guard. I find a letter incriminating him and bring it back to the orc. Now he's proper pissed. The letter implies that his wife is alive, so we go and kick his door down. We search the house frantically, and the game makes me feel like a total idiot. Can I... Impossible to open. What do we do? Destroy the barrel.
Now let's march down here and find my wife. We find the two in the basement, and what happens next will shock you. Quiet, Masamon. Just relax. <laughs> relax, <laughs> motherfucker. Here with my wife. My wife, you deviant backstabbing. She's mine, dumb rag. <gasps> no. I can't save you now, you ignorant son of a... I love him. <gasps> the tool, you faithless wretch! How dare you! How dare you! Oh my God! It's a novella. Corrupt, spineless. Do not, I. Enough Jonathan, of this. come here. You gotta watch these stories. Me. She no longer loves you. You must come to terms with that orc. Now, leave our home and never bother me or her ever again. <laughs> Well, he's just gonna get with Wanathan, apparently. Comes as a shock. What? What do I do? What? What? What do I do? Oh shit! Audience interaction. Okay. <sighs> Leave them be. Try to forget they never existed and rebuild your life. Dude, you want a job at a museum? <laughs> Bad business all around. No good can come from stooping to this level anymore. I'm leaving this den of iniquity. Perhaps we'll meet again, perhaps we won't. Thanks for the help. Here, take this. Some gold from my old merc jobs. Oh, damn, dude. 1250? Anyway, I fast travel to the next quest. Back to the little camp with Talos worshippers. I don't know how I fucked up this dialogue tree so hard. I came here to tell them to calm down, and I ended up giving them the courage they needed to stand up for what they believe in. The guard captain comes over to tell me what a good job I've done, then I fuck off to the other side of the map to turn in my last quest. Episode 40, I finally get my shit together and look up how to continue the quest to help the bar. Turns out you have to say that you'll help him, but don't really help him. We do a bit of fibbing and he gives us a memory gem that contains some evidence of why the place should be shut down. We head into the palace to find the captain and right as I was about to touch the handle, he springs out and scares the shit out of me. I clearly caught him in the middle of beating the shit out of this poor woman guard, but he buys my silence by offering me a pint down at the pub. Before that, I give him the gem and he insists we listen to it as well. What can only be described as one of the most embarrassing sex tapes I've ever heard plays. What's that snot-brained Altmer doing here? This is no place for one of them. You don't think he's Thalmor, do you? No, doesn't seem to sort. But he's still not the right type for our little den. Might bring the wrong kind of attention. So what do we do? Stabbing him would be... excessive, so... I know. Why don't we treat him to a little show of our favorite lusty Argonian maid? Oh my Perfect. god. Perfect. Let's go fetch her. Here, take this coin. I'd like to buy a little show for my Altmer friend over there. Sure thing. <laughs> oh, one other thing. He wanted you to roleplay as Lifser Tail, you know, from... Oh my god. <laughs> Altmer. Always the same fantasy. Sure thing. Hey, darling. I heard you wanted a date with Lifter Tail. What is the meaning of this? Lifter Tail? What a ridiculous name for an even more ridiculous. Oh my! Zarxus is breath! <laughs> what an oblivion are you doing? I demand that you put that back on! Arviel, give me strength! Cease and desist! I demand that you cease and desist at once, you <laughs> crackless lizard woman! Stop jiggling about! I can't take this anymore! I think I'm going to faint! I think. Oh. Ha, it worked. Otis, you really are a genius. <laughs> I know. Sop didn't even know what hit him. Ha! They My made him man. special in Alinor, don't they? And when it finishes, the guard captain deems that nothing illegal happens, so there's nothing he can do about it. 
I go back to the elf and give him the bad news that his premature ejaculation wasn't sufficient evidence for a legal case. So he fucks off back to wherever and I get paid. Now it's time to meet my buddy down at the bar for that drink he promised me earlier for no reason at all. He gets a little lost in the sauce and starts spelling about some shit from his past. It ends up with him asking me to take down a bandit leader, which I'm always down for. Apparently they're holed up in an underground fort that is directly south of the city. I head straight there and I find out these guys ain't fucking around. First dude I fight right outside the cave is tanky as hell, so it's gonna be a big fight. And a big fight ensues. Many arrows, fireballs, and funny moments were had. Then I died and had to do it all over again. Alright, I'm going for it. You won't I'ma get ya! I'ma get ya! As soon as this wears off, you're dead. Alright, where you go? Stupid <laughs> asshole. I'll take on this whole camp by myself. What was that? What's up, bitch? Oh! <laughs> This time I was more careful and ended up winning, but there was a ton of loot. I picked up every little bullshit thing in this fortress because I have a problem. I find their jail area and decide to rummage through there next. More fighting, more dying, more fighting, more victory, more looting. Unfortunately, somewhere in this water filled room is a Nern root that won't shut the fuck up. I find it, but after that little annoyance, I am so fucking done with this room, so I head back to go deeper into the fort. Turns out I had to go that way first anyway, since I found the key for the main door. In the next room, there is a ton of people to fight, and it gets super chaotic. My only saving grace was my boy Wadathan being an absolute tank. I loot a bunch and find a key to the next room. Then, I do the smartest thing I've done in a good while. I save my game before opening this fucking door. Followed by the dumbest thing I've done in a while. I try to recharge my sword and... Okay, real quick, let me charge my... Did I just drop it? Fuck. Damn it! <laughs> I'm like, hold on guys, let me drop my sword so you can fucking kill me easier. God damn it. I die a few more times and finally win. Thinking I'm safe, I start collecting my goodies. Then, Mama Bear comes home. Luckily, I manage to paralyze her on my second attempt and end her for good. I start to loot all that good good, but realize that I have very little room left in my inventory from all the other shit I've been picking up. I pop some carry weight potions and start heading back to put shit up. Then, on my way back... All right. Oh, son of a bitch. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm dead. I just ran right into him. Surprise, more combat. At this point, I'm sick of it. I won. I go back to the captain and he says he has a reward for me. And he fucking better after all the shit I just went through. He had me follow him to the count where they gave me the opportunity to buy a house, which isn't much of a reward and a bit of gold and a title. They kind of piss me off for what they do to Wanathan. Nobody's going to thank Wanathan for his his deeds. Okay. As we're exiting the castle, the Thalmor stop the guard captain to have a little word. The sons of bitches take him to prison for helping those Talos worshippers earlier, and that's just the end of the quest line? God damn it, that is the most cliffhanger of a quest ending, and I want to go break his ass out of prison right now. But I get over that pretty quickly and in the episode. Episode 41, I fucked up on so hard. I typically do multiple mic checks before I start recording, but not the one time it actually fucks up. My mic makes a clicking noise the entire episode and I hate it. Regardless, I start by fixing another mistake by actually going back to the boss room of that last episode in order to finish looting. Nothing of note, so we move on. Back to Skyrim, now that we're done with the main quest of the area. There's still plenty to explore, so we'll be back later, but for now we're going to be tying up some loose ends. Once there, I get interrupted by this sick fight scene. Obviously the bear wins and I kill the winner. 
Anyway, I fast traveled to that one cave we couldn't beat earlier with the three stage boss fight. But we're back to kick some ass, hopefully, maybe. And I do indeed kick ass. It gets close a couple of times, but finishing the fight gives me probably one of the best amulets in the game. If I didn't have my dear friend and companion Wanathan here, I'd definitely be rocking this thing. Giving you stat upgrades and resurrecting to full health every 20 minutes is actually crazy. The next little while I spend roaming the countryside heading to the next objective, which was a tool bag. I find the cave and have a couple of scraps here and there, eventually ending up with the tool bag. Now, maybe I'm just stupid, but I don't really get the purpose of it. Scratch that, I am stupid and I never use it. Next item on the list is some rock. Luckily, I've already cleared out the place that it's in, so it should be a walk in the park. It couldn't possibly turn into a two hour episode. Then I see it. The maze. This fucking maze, dude. It actually wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty straightforward and used very little of my bio RAM. The only part where I had to think were these parts where they wanted you to use a spell from a certain school of magic to trigger these switches that unlock doors. Which isn't exactly hard when they give you a staff from each school to use right at the start. I make it through the maze, grabbing the stone I came for, which allows me to fully refill my magic at the cost of soul gems. I learn the f-bomb and head back into the winding path and flip some more switches. With all of them activated, a portal opens up saying the Trial of Conjuration. Upon entering, I'm immediately attacked by some guy. I beat his ass so hard, even the game wants me to stop. After that, I'm teleported back to the beginning. A couple of monsters are summoned in front of the exit, but I get through them easy enough. Our next objective is a torch that we tried to get earlier, but were way too underleveled for. I go to the cave and kill everything that moves. I find the torch on a dead body. I don't check it out because I'm too busy worrying about my full backpack. In fact, I forget about it entirely as I plan my next objective. The stone hands that I tried to get earlier but failed. This time will be different though. This time I'm still gonna fail, but now I'm gonna flee like a coward. I run in, grab everything I can, learn the word of power, and fuck right off down the mountain using my paraglider. I run into the forest to try to lose the dragon, but stumble upon a little inn in the middle of nowhere. I get inside and I wait out the aggro. I even rent a room to take a nap. Now that I'm safe and sound, I check on my loot. The torch just seems to be an infinite torch, but not all that special. The stone hands make my speech craft better for some reason, but I don't see the importance. Next on the list is a journal that's on my airship. It took me an embarrassing long amount of time to find out I could just roll up the rug and enter the smuggling's hold where the book is. The journal activates a quest that we will be starting in the next episode. The quest wasn't all that exciting. I go to the quest marker and I dig for 12 hours and find a room. The room was just filled with some robot spiders and odds and ends. Next objective was to get the codex. I waited till I had more fast travel points unlocked to do this quest to make it easier for myself and boy did it pay off, as both points had locations nearby. I find them both relatively quick even though my game crashed while I was fighting. I head back to the silent mood camps just to be ambushed once again. This time however, I do not ask for help. Instead, I slaughter the men in front of me, proving my worth and showing them how far I've come. <gasps> my masters. There they are, in the dark. You see how powerful I've become, masters. This is all for you, master. I push my way through the camp one last time, finding the codex. It gives a ton of bonuses for a bunch of different mods, basically helping me locate things or finding things. Pretty neat, and I'm a level with you. I, I didn't understand how it worked until I started writing this script. I'm such a dumbass. Speaking of being a dumbass, I couldn't decide what to do next, so I decided to smooth out my brain by marking every fucking quest in my journal. Not only does this clutter the map beyond belief, it also glitches the markers so they're not accurate. My dumbass didn't find out about this until later though. 
I will start my journal cleaning in my home of solitude. Luckily, I find a quest guy as soon as I get there. Unfortunately, I also find a damn dragon. For the first time, they actually give up and fuck off. I shrug it off and go back to following quest markers. I enter the blue palace, talk to a gal, and enter the off-limits wing of the palace. It leads to me blacking out and waking up to the girl of my dreams. I love Sheogorath, and I totally forgot about this quest. And it shows when I forget how to do some of the basic tasks presented to me. After completing my tasks, I take my leave and gain the Wabajack. I leave the palace and flex my smooth brain once again by trying to use the Wabajack on a dragon. I do manage to kill the dragon, and by that I mean I waited patiently and edited it out later. I managed to squeeze one more quest in before ending the video. Continuing with the spring cleaning of my journal, I head to the guard captain and have a word to advance a quest, followed by me going to the temple next door and finding a chest that I have no means nor idea of how to open it. I then head into town to go tell this woman the good news that she gets to bury her daughter. <laughs> I talk to some more NPCs about some bullshit quests, and then run into the problem of having this many quest markers. They don't update, nor are they accurate. The markers keep telling me that I can report the lizard man to the guard captain, but it won't let me do so. So I just say fuck the whole quest and just don't do it. The next closest marker is the bird's eye. So I follow the coast, and it turns out that you can't follow the coast because it's up on top of a mountain. I fast travel somewhere else and get there pretty easily. When I get there, it's nothing but a tower filled with dead bodies and alchemy ingredients. I get to the top of the tower and the quest wants me to sit in a tiny chair for some reason. And the reason is that some woman can sneak up on me and threaten me. Then she just immediately pivots to begging for her life. Turns out she was one of the necromancers here and was trying to get turned into some harpy thing for great power. I take pity on her and I ask if I can help out. I don't see a marker because they're broken, but I do see a marker for a delivery that I can make right before the episode ends. Another fucked up episode for the books, boys. More mic clicking in this one, and this time I downloaded a program to permanently fix the issue. Speaking of awful mistakes, I start this episode off by going into the wrong cave. Turns out that there was a cave higher up into the mountains that was the true entrance. I walk into the true cave and kill a troll. That's it, that's the quest. And I'm not gonna lie. After I take my leave, I go to the Dragon Bridge to pick up a shipment for the guard captain in solitude. And the first true problem of having too many quest markers shows itself. The marker is way off and led my dumbass up a mountain. I get frustrated and head back to the bridge just to see if I can find the guy. I find the guy, but he refuses to talk with me no matter how many times I ask. Once again frustrated, I go find something else to do. Back on the coastline is a marker to find some ring, so off we go. I find the ring out in the open next to a dead guy. Looking for more easy quests like that one, I find one at the college that just says to talk to some guy. It turned out to be the guy who traded an amulet but wants it back, so now I have to go talk to the bully. He says he'll give me the amulet back if you take back a staff he gave to an evil wizard. Unfortunately, progression on this quest was lost to the sea of quest markers. My meds must not be kicking in because I once again jump over to the other side of the map for a completely different quest. I just can't stay in one place. I go back to the inn in the middle of nowhere that I used to escape from the dragon. I talk to some NPCs and waste a lot of time before not finding the thing I'm looking for and just giving up. Off to the next one. Now we need to find some guy's journal in the same place that we found that useless quill earlier. I get into a big fight and leave the book for the next episode. I start the episode with more fighting and find the book pretty close to the entrance. Also, between episodes I looked up the lighthouse quest and found out that he betrays you anyway so I get the result I wanted. I also find out that you can hit M in the quest journal to show the marker on the map. The fact that I am just now learning this makes me so sad. But now we know that we can easily find where the evil wizard is. I make my way to the marker and find a cave. I go in and pretty much slaughter them all with little resistance. Apparently there was a vampire here who had a bounty on him, 
So just a little bonus to finding the staff. I head back to the college and end up talking to the wrong guy, but I still get to turn in a quest anyway. I also got access to the college's secret library. I edited most of it out, but I read all the books in there. Once again, my markers are fucked, so I can't find the guy to give him the staff. So I move on to the lighthouse quest. I turn off the light in the lighthouse and go back to solitude thinking that's where I gotta talk to the Argonian, but it's not. While I'm here, I collect some bounties and then go to the docks to talk to him. All he says is to go to the shipwreck to meet his sister. I meet with her and she tries to kill me. I have that effect on women. This actually takes me a couple of times, but I manage to kill them all. I read a note on their body that tells me where they took the loot. And luckily, it's a place I've already cleared out. I go to this huge cave and fight two guys, one of them being the Argonian we spoke to. With that quest done, I actually form a wrinkle in this little brain of mine and unmark all the quests in my journal. It finally fixes the problem, so I go back to the college to find the guy for the staff. He trades me the amulet and I give it back to the original owner. We start episode 47 with the Birds of a Feather quest, the one where the lady wants to turn into a harpy or whatever. It doesn't take long to get to this quaint little home in the middle of nowhere. I start a conversation with the dad and... Hello, sir. Ah, uh, sirs. I actually managed to kill both of them on my first try. I talk to the man again and he invites me to stay the night with his family which I thought was very nice of them. It wasn't until he started talking about how nice my earlobes were and wondering how big my toes are that I started to get a little creeped out. I step inside and meet his wife. She talks about how much she likes my nose and I'm starting to get a little bit of a cannibal vibe here. I have the option to poison the soup and I take it. At the table, they talk about some weird superstitions they have and I am just so weirded out by them. Then the wife asked me the dumbest question ever. So is it true what they say? Have the dragons returned? Were you not outside two seconds ago? Then the girl ruins my plans by showing me her bug collection. It stops them before they eat, but we do eventually get back to dinner. Except the girl? She leaves the house for some reason. The mom and dad sit down to eat and die just how I wanted. I take what I need and head outside. To my surprise, the girl also triggered to die. I try to frame the dragon by putting the little girl's body next to it, but the body despawns, so I just throw her in a bush. I head back to the necromancer woman and she tells me to put some ingredients into the cauldron. Instructions unclear, get caught in ceiling fan. Yeah, I fucked it up hard. I give her a proper burial and move on. On to Dawnstar where I can turn in some bounties on some vampires. But wouldn't you know it? They were dead when I got here, I swear! I find a piece of paper on one of the bodies and it triggers a new quest. It leads me to town where I go into the inn and find out that the whole town is having terrible nightmares. This man asks me for help, but before that I read another piece of paper that tells me to search some ruins. I decide to go to the ruins first. I find yet another dead guy and a journal telling me that there's a secret cult hiding in Dawnstar. I'm now tasked with following the suspects to figure out who done did kill the man. Episode 49, yes, episode 49, you did not hallucinate and I did not fuck up, 13.5 is now canon, whatever, doesn't matter. Between episodes, I get a tad sidetracked with Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 has my balls in a vice, somebody help, please help me. And it's fun as hell. But I came back to just do one more episode and disappear again. Back at Dawnstar, I try not to blow my brains out walking with this dude. He tells me about the temple being filled with some sort of sleepy EP gas, but we go in regardless. He heats up the door to let us through, which was pretty rad, and then shows me the skull of corruption, which is even radder. <laughs> we head further into the temple, but we run into a magical barrier that is impossible to get past. He then says there might be a way in the library. So off we go, fighting some dudes along the way. When everything settles, he tells me to find a certain book out of all these books. I grab the book and every other burned and ruined book along the way. The book tells him about a potion that uses people's dreams to travel real world distances, which, again, super rad. The potion needs a special ingredient that's in the next room. I find it almost immediately after the fight there and give it to the dude. He makes the potion and gives it to me to drink. 
I drink it in front of the barrier and I'm sent back in time to when all this shit went down. I run back to the other side of the barrier and I am sent back to the present. I take the crystal that was powering the barrier and we make our way towards the skull. After a few fights and looting some more stuff, we make it to the skull. His two buddies aren't very nice to us, so they die, of course. Then he starts the ritual. A voice speaks in my head telling me he's going to betray me and free the skull, but I trust the man enough to let him do his thing. He comes through destroying the skull and saving the day. Next on Legenda is tailing one of the three suspects that could be in the cult. In between episodes, I actually looked up who it was because I would have gone so mad just trying to follow each and every one of them. I head to the mines where one of the suspects uses a secret door. A secret door leading to a secret cult having a secret meeting. After I find them, I'm tasked with destroying them. After looting them, that was it. That was the end of the quest. And the final episode in this. That's it. That's the video. You're now all caught up. Everything from the humble penis with a bump on his head to the absolute unit erected before you now as a god. A god who admittedly dies quite a bit. Thank you to anyone who watched this. It took me forever to do, and it was quite challenging for me. Please validate my hard work with a like, subscribe, all that shiz. If this does well, God, I hope it does well. I'll be doing more of these edited videos of my other playthroughs. If you don't want to wait for those, you can always watch the videos as they come out. I got playlists of everything mentioned here, as well as every other video I make. It's prime second screen content, I assure you. Again, thank you for watching, and please look forward to more adventures of Tardy Penis and Wanathan. I'll see you in the next one.